Hi everyone, welcome to Math World. This video is to discuss Cambridge International AS and A Level Mathematics Paper 3, which is the Pure Mathematics 3 for February March 2023, and the code is 9709/32. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoy watching my video and share it with your friends. Then more videos will be available soon. Thank you. Let's move on to question one. So this is given that x equals to ln of 2y minus 3 minus ln of y plus 4. Express y in terms of x. Okay, so from here, we will use the formula. So ln a minus ln b is going to be ln a over b because there is a minus here. Alright, so it means that first of all, I will rewrite the question. Then by applying the formula ln a minus ln b, it will be ln of 2y minus 3 over y plus 4. Okay, now we need to get the y as a subject means that we need to eliminate the ln. Okay, so this can be done by taking e both sides. So e x equals to e ln of 2y minus 3 over y plus 4. So the e and ln will be cancelled off from the right hand side. Okay, then from here, I will be getting ex equals to 2y minus 3 over y plus 4. And now, in order to get y as a, as a subject, so now I have to times this x plus 4 to the, uh, with the ex. So I will get yex plus 4ex equals to 2y minus 3. Okay, then now I will just move this y e x to the right side and move the minus 3 to the right side or to the left hand side so i will get um, 4 e x plus 3 equals to 2 y minus y e x okay so now i rewrite my y will be taken out so i will get 2 minus e x and then equals to 4 e x plus 3 and then at last the 2 minus ex will be moved to the right side. So now my y is going to be 4ex plus 3 divided by 2 minus ex. Okay, so that is the solution for this question. Okay, now question number 2, A. On an argon diagram, shade the region whose points represent complex numbers, Z satisfying the inequality. Z argument of z minus i minus 1 minus 2i in between minus 1 over 3 pi and 1 over 3 pi and then another one is re re is actually the real part okay so from here minus 1 over 3 pi less equals to argument z instead of minus 1 minus 2i i can factorize a minus and write 1 plus 2i because i need to find a reference point so now from here i know that my reference point is going to be uh, with coordinates 1 and here 1 and 2, okay? That's the reference point. And then the REZ is less equal to 3. The Z is x plus IY. So it's going to be uh, real parts of x plus YI or IY is going to be the x. So this means your x is less equal to 3. So now I'm going to draw these two, uh, these two loci on the, on, no, this, I need to shade the region for these two complex numbers. Okay, for the complex number represented by these two inequalities. So now, let's say this is the imaginary Z and this is the RE Z, the real part. So I have a point 1, 2. Let's say here 1, 2. Here 1, 2. Okay, so the points with coordinates 1 and 2. 1 and 2 is here. And then the argument is between negative pi over 4. 3 and pi over 3. Let's say I take this as reference line. Pi over 3 is basically 60 degrees, which means now I will be getting here pi over 3. Okay, and this is negative pi over 3. Alright, so from here is in between these two lines, then there's an equal sign. Therefore, I use a uh, solid line, the green line, to draw the 
to represent the points. Okay, all means all this will be the points. And then another one is x less equals to 3. So let's say this is my 3. That means now I have to draw another vertical line. Okay, this is the vertical line, straight line. Okay, so here I have to extend it. So please measure the angle using the compass. Okay, so now, then here, x less equals to 3 means that all this region. And in between, that means this is going to be your region. Alright, so done for first part A. Okay, now, B calculates the least value of argument Z for points in the region from A. Give your answer in radians correct to three decimal places. So now, least value of argument Z. So all the points on the green line will be the Z. So the least one is expected to be this angle. Okay, so it will be touching here. So this is my Z. This is going to be the argument. Okay, now how do I get this argument? So now when you look at the whole picture, I know that this is a right, right triangle, right angle triangle. Here is going to be 3. Okay, let me check. Okay, you look at here. We know that here is 1. Alright, this is 1. And then here is 3. Which means this is going to be 2 units. I let this be x. Alright, and then the angle here is pi. Pi over 3, sorry, pi over 3. For the argument, it will be negative pi over 3. But for the angle itself, the magnitude of the angle is pi over 3. So I will draw that triangle first. Here is going to be x, this is 2, here is pi over 3. Okay, because I need to know what is this value. Alright, I know that at this point, the y, look at here, the x is going to be 3. I do not know what is this value, this question mark. So that's why I need to find the x first, because I know that here is going to be 2. Okay, so I need to find the question mark before I get the argument. My argument is here. Okay, this is a less, least argument. Okay, so now from here, obviously, we have to use tangent pi over 3 because the x is the opposite side of pi over 3 and the 2 is the adjacent side. So it will be, it will be x over 2. So from here, my x is going to be 2 tangent pi over 3. And then this is going to be 2 square root 3. Okay, then now, after I have found that this total is 2 square root 3, then to get the question mark, I just need, need to minus 2 from 2 square root 3. That is my question mark. Then I will draw another triangle, which is the big one here. Right? The bottom triangle, the second triangle. That means here, the horizontal, assist, the horizontal distance is 3. Then I need to know what is this argument. Okay, and this length is going to be 2 root 3 minus 2, as I've explained just now. The upper one, the upper length is 2 units, the total is 2 root 3. So the question mark is just minus. Okay, so now from here, to get the argument, you are given the opposite side, which is 2 root 3 minus 2, and then the adjacent side is 3. So it means that now my least argument, Z, okay, is going to be, Inverse tangent, 2 square root 3 minus 2 over 3. Now, this is going to be negative because when you look at the angle over here, okay, it is below the axis, right? It's below the rear axis. Therefore, I have the times are negative. Then, this is going to be negative 0 0.454 radians. Right, so that is the solution for part B.
Okay, now question number three. The polynomial ax degree 4 plus ax cubed, sorry, 2x degree 4 plus ax cubed plus bx minus 1, where a and b are constants, is denoted by px. When px is divided by this quadratic factor, or this quadratic function, the remainder is 3x plus 2. Find the a and b. So now, I will carry out the, I will perform the polynomial division because this is quartic function, x degree 4, divided by quadratic, right? So you have to perform the polynomial division. So here's going to be the divisor, x squared minus x plus 1. Then inside the bracket, it should be, inside the division, it should be the function itself. So after degree 4, it will be degree 3. After degree 3, it should be degree 2. But then there's no degree 2 in the polynomial. We just write 0 x squared. Then plus bx, then minus 1. Okay, so when the quartic function divided by quadratic, in order to get 2x4, 2x degree 4 from x squared, I need to times with 2x squared. Then I will be getting 2x degree 4. Then 2x degrees, 2x squared times minus x, it will be negative 2x cubed. 2x squared times 1, it will be plus 2x squared. Then after that, you minus. Okay, so now, the first term will be 0. Second term, ax cubed minus minus 2x cubed, uh, 2x cubed. It will be a plus 2x cubed. Then the third term, 0 minus 2, it will be negative 2x squared. Bring down bx. So now, from x squared to get a plus 2 times x cubed, you have to times by a plus 2 times x. Okay, so I need to get the first term. Then now, 2 plus a plus 2 multiplied by x, multiply with negative x. That means you are getting negative of a plus 2x squared. And same for the last term, a plus 2 multiplied by x times plus 1. It will be a plus 2 multiplied by x. So I have to move my bx to the right side. Okay, then now, again, I minus. So first term will be 0. Second term here, look at here. This is minus 2. When you minus, minus, it becomes plus ready. Okay, so I will get minus 2 plus a. So I will get a. Then minus 2 plus 2, it will be 0. That means it's just ax squared. Okay, plus, then b minus the bracket. So I will get b minus a minus 2x. And then there's a minus 1 here, I bring it down. Okay, so it means that here I have to adjust the space a little bit. So here is minus 1. So now, to get a squared from x squared, I need to multiply by a. So here is going to be a x squared, then minus a x, then minus a. And now you minus. So first term will be 0. Second term, when you look at here, be careful with this. b minus minus, okay, you see the a here. Minus a minus minus is plus a. So it means that the a will be cancelled off. Then I, at last, I will get b minus a times x. b minus 2 times x, sorry. b minus 2 times x. Okay, then the second term, minus 1, minus, minus a, means that you'll be getting plus of minus 1, plus a. Okay, so from here, this is my remainder. Alright, and now the remainder is given, 3x plus 2. So I will just equate them. So 3x plus 2 equals to b minus 2 times x plus minus 1 plus a. A. Okay, let me check. Is this plus? Okay, I found a small mistake here. Is it plus A times 1? It's supposed to be plus A. Okay, so now here it's going to be plus A, then minus 1 minus plus A means that it is minus A. Alright, so then now we will just compare. So 3 equals to three, uh, b minus 2. That means your b is going to be 3 plus 2, which is 5. Then 2 is minus 1 minus a. That means to get the a, I will move this negative a to the left-hand side, and the 2 will be moved to the right side. 
So it will be minus 1 minus 2, which is minus 3. Okay, so these are the A and B values. Okay, now for question number 4, you need to solve this equation, giving your answers in the form of x plus iy, where x and y are real. So I will let my z be x plus yi. Then now I will replace 5z, so x plus iy, over 1 plus 2i minus okay, x plus iy times x minus iy. This is the conjugate of z. Okay, that's why x minus iy. So for conjugate, we always uh, change the sign of the imaginary part. After that, plus 30 plus 10i equals to 0. So we have a formula here. If the complex number multiplied by its conjugate is basically real part squared plus imaginary part squared. So here, I'm going to replace it by x squared plus y squared. And then for the first term, it will be 5x plus 5yi over 1 plus 2i. Then I multiply by its conjugate to eliminate the denominator. I mean to eliminate the complex number in the denominator. Okay, then minus this is the real part squared plus imaginary part squared. Then plus 30 plus 10i equals to 0. So now I need to do the expansion for the numerator. So just do one by one. 5x times 1, 5x. 5x times minus 2i minus 10i. Then minus 5yi minus 5y times 2. So 10yi squared over the denominator is again complex number times its conjugate. Therefore, 1 squared plus 2 squared. Okay, then here I will times in the minus. So it will be minus x squared minus y squared plus 30 plus 10i equals to 0. Okay, then now for the first term, remember i squared is minus 1. Therefore, this is minus 1 here, this i squared. So minus minus, it becomes plus. So I will group the first and last term because it will be, a, it will be the real part. So I will get 5x plus 10y. And then the denominator is 5. So now I will split it into 5. Uh, I will split it. So here I will write over 5. Then minus 10 minus 5y. So minus 10i minus 5yi. Okay, so I will write here. Minus 5yi minus 10i over 5. Then here is going to be just to rewrite. Now I can simplify. Okay, the 5 cancel off. This is 2. This one again, 5 cancel off. This is 2. Okay, and I did a mistake here because here both minus, right? Both minus. So if I write minus in the middle, here supposed to be plus, la, right? So now I will get x. Once you have factorized, once you have simplified, x plus 2y, then minus i y or yi, then minus 2i, minus x squared, minus y squared, plus 30, plus 10i, equals to 0. Then from here, I go and group those with i and those without i. Means that the real and imaginary parts. So from here, my real part will have these five terms. Okay, so I will write them first. x plus 2y, minus x squared, minus y squared, plus 30. That is my real part. The imaginary part, you will have all the i. See here, all the i. All right. So I will get plus minus y. Okay, let me check. Do I miss out any term? 5x times 1 or oh, 5x times 2i. 10xi, okay, this is x. 10xi. Right, so 10xi, I will have to write here x. xi. Then I will get x. 
Right, so when I factorize the i, later I will get. Wait, uh, I need to check one more. Okay, here, one more. Mistake. 5yi times 1 plus 5yi. Okay, so 1 plus 1 minus, so means that here, I better write plus. Then here is going to be minus. Sorry about this mistake. Then here I'm going to get plus and here is minus. Okay, so here I will get y minus 2x where I compare the i, where I take out the i, then plus 10 and i at the back. It will be 0 plus 0i. Then from here I will solve the, I will compare the real and imaginary parts. So now the first one is x plus 2y minus x squared minus y squared plus 30 is going to be 0. Okay, the second is y minus, 20, minus 2x plus 10 equals to 0. Then from here, I can get my y. So my y is going to be 2x minus 10. I let this be second equation. This is my first equation. So now I substitute second equation into first equation. I will get x plus 2. The y will be, will be replaced by the second equation. Then minus x squared. Then minus the y is going to be 2x minus 10. Then it's squared plus 30. Okay, now we have to do expansion. So x plus these two multiply 4x. These two times minus 10 minus 20. Minus x squared remains negative of. Okay, now you have a quadratic. Look at here. This is a quadratic. So use the quadratic formula to expand. This is going to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Then I will get 4x squared minus 40x plus 100. Then plus another 30 at the back. Okay. And I forgot, I forgot to write the equals to 0. So equals to 0. So from here, you do the expansion. So x, x plus 4x, it will be 5x. Then minus 20, minus x squared. This minus you bring in. So minus 4x squared. Then here, plus 40x. Then the minus times 100, minus 100. Then plus 30 equals to 0. So now when I simplify, minus x squared minus 4x squared will be minus 5x squared. And then here, 5x plus 40x, it will be 45x plus 45x. And then the rest of the terms, look at here, minus 20 minus 100, it will be minus 120. Then plus 30, it will be minus 90. So I get minus 90, then equals to 0. Now, for the whole equation, I can just times by negative 5. Or divide, okay, sorry, not times, divide by negative 5. So then, from here, it will be x squared minus 9x plus 18 equals to 0. Okay? And then from here, this quadratic equation can be factorized into x minus 6 and x minus 3 equals to 0. Therefore, x minus 6 equals to 0, that means your x is 6. Or x minus 3 equals to 0, that means your x is going to be 3. Now, look at the question. Give, giving your answers in the form x plus i, y, where x and y are real. So now I need to find my y values. You can get it by substituting into second equation. So from second equation, right, when x equals to 6, the y is going to be 2 times 6 minus 10. Then you will get 12 minus 10 is 2. And then when x equals to 3, the y is going to be 2 times 3 minus 10. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 minus 10 is going to be minus 4. Okay, lastly, my complex number can be x plus i, y. So 6 plus 2y from the first pair of answer and then 6 minus 4y. Sorry, 3. Okay, not 6. The second x is 3. So this is going to be 3. Right, so these are the two complex numbers that satisfy the equation. 
Okay, now question number five. Given the x is t e a t, y is quadratic, show the dy dx. So now my x is t e a t, t e 2 t. So since there are two t functions here, that means we are going to use the products rule. So products rule d over dx u v equals to u d v over dx plus v d u over dx. Okay, so here I'm getting dx over dt. Okay, this is my u, this is my v. So now, when you, when I direct apply this formula, dx dt, my u is t, so keep the u, so keep the t. When you differentiate exponential, so differentiate exponential ax plus b, let's say for example, the general form. So what we, what we do here is we just rewrite the whole expo, exponential, then differentiate the power of e. So when differentiate ax plus b, it's going to be a. Okay, so apply this concept, keep the e, then differentiate 2t is going to be 2. That is your dv dx or dv dt here. Then plus exponential 2t and differentiate the u to get du dx. Here we get du dt. Then you'll be getting 1. So now from here, I will factorize the exponential function because it is in common. Okay, so e 2t, then 2t plus 1. That is my first expression, which is for dx dt. Now I will do it for dy dt. Because to get the dy dx from parametric equations, we need to apply the chain rule. So now your y is t squared plus t plus 3. Your dy over dt is 2t plus 1. Okay, then at last, my dy dx is going to be dy over dt times dt over dx. So my d, dy dt is 2t plus 1. Alright, so here, 2t plus 1. Now, for your info, we have found dx dt. Okay, dx dt is this. And now we need to get dt dx. So dt dx is 1 over dx over dt. Okay, so that means now here I will write times 1 over this result. So e t, e 2t, sorry. Multiply with 2t plus 1. So now the 2t plus 1 will be cancelled off. Then you will get e 2t, 1 over e 2t. Okay, now look at the question here. You need to show e negative 2t. So since your exponential is the denominator, so we have to move up. So once you move up, just times a minus to the existing degree. Alright, so this is how we show the dy dx. Okay, now B, hence show that the normal to the curve where t equals to minus 1 passes through the point. Okay, so now, means that now I have to, before, to get, before we get the normal equation, we have to get the tangent gradients first. So when t equals to minus 1, the dy dx is basically the tangent equation, uh, tangent gradient. So it's going to be e negative 2t. So I will get e negative 2t, which is e, sorry, your t is minus 1. So it's going to be e squared. Now, this is gradient of tangent. Okay, we need the gradient of normal. So m normal equals to negative 1 over dy over dx. Because we have a formula, m1, m2 is minus 1. The gradient, the tangent is perpendicular to normal line. Alright, so this is negative 1 over e squared, which means the gradient of normal is e negative 2. Okay, now, to form the normal line, we need a point. Okay, point with two coordinates x and y. So now I need to count when t equals to minus 1, what are my x and y values? So my x is t e 2t. This is 1 times e 2 times minus 1. Sorry, your t is negative. So here it's going to be negative e negative 2. Okay, then the y is a quadratic. So the y is 
t squared plus t plus 3. which means this is minus 1 squared plus minus 1 plus 3. So you will get 1 minus 1 plus 3, which is 3. So now I'm getting a point. The point with coordinates, negative e, negative 2, and 3. Okay, so now with the point and the gradient of normal, which is here, then I can form the normal line. And later I will show this, right, because you want to show the normal line passes through that point. So now, first of all, form the equation of normal. So equation of normal, y minus y1 equals to m brackets x minus x1. So y minus y1 is 3. Your m is e negative 2. Then x minus negative e negative 2. Okay, so now I will just move the minus 3 to right side. So y equals to, at the same time, you can just expand here, e negative 2x, and then minus minus is plus. Okay, then e negative 2 times e negative 2 is e negative 4, because we have a formula. ea times eb is ea plus b. So minus 2 plus minus 2 is minus 4. So I will get plus e minus 4, and then the minus 3 you move to right side, becomes plus 3. Okay, so... Let me check any mistakes first before I proceed. Okay, I found one mistake here. There's a minus, so I miss out the minus. Right, so here is a minus. So when there is a minus, that means first is minus, the second minus, 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 it becomes minus x minus uh, e to the power of negative 4. It's no longer plus. So I have to change the plus e minus 4 to minus. Alright, so now we need to show that the normal line passes through this point. Means that this is the x, here is the y. So I just let the x be 0 and show the y is 3 minus 1 over e power 4. That is the coordinates that I want to show. So when x goes to 0, my y is, the first one is going to be 0, then minus e negative 4 plus 3. So when I rearrange, this is negative 1 over e degree 4 plus 3, which is same as 3 minus 1 over e degree 4. Okay, which is same as the given y coordinate. So then, normal passes through normal line. Okay, normal line passes through 0, 3 minus 1 over e degree 4. Alright, so that's the solution of this question. Okay, next question. Express 5 sine theta plus 12 cos theta in this form, where r is greater than 0, and then the alpha is between 0 and half pi. So now, 5 sine theta plus 12 cos theta equals to r cos theta minus alpha. Basically, the r is square root of 5 squared plus 12 squared, which is 13. Okay, when here is cos, right, I need to rearrange. Alright, so I have to write. Because if this is cos, the first term should be cos. It's not, five, it's not the sign. So I will write, this is uh, 12 cos theta plus 5 sine theta equals to r cos theta minus alpha. So this is your a. A is the 12, B is 5. So then, once you have written in the correct form, then your alpha is going to be inverse tangent B over A, so 5 over 12. Then you will get 0 0.395. Okay, therefore, your 5 sine theta plus 12 cos theta is going to be 13 cos theta minus 0 0.395. Okay? So if here cos, the first term should be cos, based on the addition formula, or factor formula. Okay, so now, that's all for the A. 
Now, B, hence. Hence means use previous answer. Solve this. Now, just now we solve 5 sine theta plus 12 cos theta. That is the same as 13 cos theta minus 0 0.395. So, when you look at here, this is sine 2x. Sine theta. That means now my theta is 2x. Okay, my theta is 2x. Which means I will write 5 sine 2x plus 12 cos 2x equals to 6. I will compare. Okay, compare and let theta is 2x. Which means the left hand side here will be 13 cos theta is 2x minus 0 0.395 then equals to 6. And now your theta is from is defined from 0 to pi inclusive. So now if your theta from 0 to pi, okay, now your theta is 2x. That means 2x is between 0 and uh, pi, right? Let me check. Oh, sorry. It is x from 0 to pi. I overlook it. So, it is x from 0 to pi, not theta. So, x from 0 to pi. So, now I have 2x. That means now my 2x from 0 to 2 pi because we just times 2. And now I'm solving 2x minus 0 0.395. So, it means that here I have to minus. So, 0 minus 3.95. 0 0.3. Sorry. 0 minus 0. 0 minus 0 0.395 is going to be negative 0 0.395. Then the middle will be the, the anchor. Then 2 pi minus this value is going to be 5.881. Okay, so from here, cos 2x minus 0 0.395 is going to be 6 over 13. Therefore, my 2x minus 0 0.395. Now look at the cost. Cost is positive, which means you can accept the angle in first and last quadrant. Okay. Now when you take the inverse cost of this value, it is going to be 1.091. I give more decimal places. So here is going to be 1.091. Okay. So now my first angle can be 1.091. Because it is in this interval. Okay. And then my second one is going to be 2 pi. Right. My second angle is over here. So it means that it's 2 pi minus this. So 2 pi minus 1.091. And I will be getting 5.192. So now in order to get 2x. Okay. Before you proceed, just check. Are these two values in the interval? Okay, they are. That means we can proceed. We can proceed. So 2x equals to this negative 0 0.935 will be moved to the right side. That means it will be added to these two angles. So I will get 1.486 and the other one is 5.587. So at last your x just divided by 2. Then I will get 0 0.743 and the other one is 2.79. So these two are the solutions of this question. Okay, now question 7. The diagram shows a circle with center O and radius R. The angle of the minor sector AOB is X radians. So this is a minor sector. Right, minor sector is over here. So now the major of the ma the area of the major angle, the A the major angle will be this. This is a ma sorry, major sector. This will be the major sector. Okay, the area of the major sector is 3 times area of the shaded region. So show that x equals to this result. Okay, so I'm going to use this. Area of major sector is 3 times of the area of the shaded region. So area of the major sector, we know that total angle is 2 pi. Since the minor angle is x, that means this is going to be 2 pi minus x. So Area of sector basically is half R squared theta. Let's say this is your theta. Here is your R. Then now, I'm going to use half. The R still the same because the radius is the same. So R squared, the theta now 
2 pi minus x, that is a measure theta, equals to 3 times area of the shaded region. So area of shaded region, when you look at the diagram here, is basically area of sector minus area of triangle. So we have a formula. If let's say this is theta, this is r, this is r, Okay, or I would say that this is A, here is B. The area of triangle is half AB sine theta. Okay, so now your A is same as the B, which is R, both also R. So my area of sector is half R square X first, because the X is my theta now, then minus half AB. My AB will be R, so R, R sine X. Okay. So, when you look at here, before we proceed, you can cancel off the half from both sides and also the r squared. Okay, then I will be getting 2x, uh, 2 pi minus x equals to this 3 times in. So, I'll get 3x minus 3 sine x. And then now I need to get the x. So, these two will be combined together. So, I will move it to the right side. It will be 4x. And then, okay, I better write 4x on the right side. So 4x. Then the minus 3 sine x will be moved to the left-hand side. That means it becomes plus. So I will get 2 pi plus 3 sine x. And now, and now I need to get the x. So the x just divided by 4. So it will be 1 over 4 of 2 pi plus 3 sine x. So at last, times in, I will get 3 over 4 sine x plus half pi because 2 pi over 4 is half pi so with this i have shown the expression okay now b show by calculation that the root of the equation in a lies between 2 and 2.5 now i will rewrite my formula first i will rewrite so x equals to 3 over 4 sine x plus half pi Then now I will rearrange it. So fx, I move all the terms to the left hand side. It will be x minus 3 over 4 sine x minus half pi. Okay, to show the roots lies between 2 and 2.5, I'm going to apply the uh, sine change rule. So f2 equals to 2 minus 3 over 4 sine 2 minus half of 2. Then you will get negative 0 0.253. Remember to count this in radiance mode in your calculator. This value is less than 0. And when I replace the x by 2.5, then you will be getting all these terms. Okay, mistake, this is pi. That is going to be 0 0.480, which is greater than 0. So now you just write f2 less than 0 and f2.5 greater than 0. There is a sign change. Okay, hence there is a root between the two values. Okay, so Done for part B. Now C, use an iterative formula based on the equation in A to calculate this root correct to two decimal places. Give the results of each iteration to four decimal places. So I will use the formula in the first, in the part A. Okay, so part A is this. All right, but to get the iteration for iterative formula, we need to add on the subscript. Which means I the first n the first x I will change to x with subscript of n plus one. Okay, then the rest just add on the subscript x. So three over four sine x add on the n plus half pi. Now from the previous part we ha I have shown that it's the root lies between two and two point five. So now your x naught can be any values in between or just take 2 or 2.5. So I will take the middle value. Okay, so let x not be 2.25. Then with this, I will get x1. So the x1 is 
3.4 sine 2.25 plus 1.2 1 over 2 pi then now remember to calculate this in radians mode and give your iteration to four decimal places then i will get 2.1549 so use this value to count the next right because your value is 2.25 and then now you get 2.15, only 2.15. So it is not the same. You must get the same two decimal places. Then only you stop the iteration. So sine 2.1549 plus half pi. Then you will get 2.1967. So your x3 is 3 over 4 sine 2.1967 plus half pi. So it's going to be 2.1786. So again, it's different. So now x4, 3 over 4, sine 2.1786 plus half pi. Then you will get 2.1865. Now, again, I get different value. Okay? So now x5 is going to be 3 over 4, sine 2.1865 plus half pi. Then this is going to be 2.1865. 3, 1. All right. So now, basically, when you look at here, this is 1, 8. This is 1, 8. Okay. That means we can stop here. And now, final answer based on the next decimal. 3 is less than 5. Therefore, we just ignore the uh, third and fourth decimal place. That means your x is going to be 2.18. Okay, that's the root of uh, correct to two decimal places in this question. Okay, now question number eight. The diagram shows the curve y equals to x cubed ln x for x greater than zero and the minimum point m. Find the exact coordinates of m. So when we see minimum points, means that we must let dy dx be zero. Okay, because it must be a stationary point. So now your y equals to x cubed ln x. So for this case, I will use the products rule. First term is u. u is x cubed. Then my du over dx is going to be 3x squared. Then my v is ln x. Now, for your information, to differentiate ln fx is going to be f prime x over fx. So which means now my dv over dx is over, this is my fx x so differential x is 1 okay and then apply the uh, the products rule so products rule says d over dx uv equals to u dv over dx plus v du over dx so now i will write my dy dx is x cubed differential ln x 1 over x because u dv dx plus v ln x times 3x squared. Okay, so I simplify first. x squared plus 3x squared ln x is my dy dx. And then now I let this be uh, 0. But before I let it be 0, I can factorize x squared. So dy dx equals to 0. That means x squared times 1 plus 3 ln x equals to 0. So when multiplication of two terms equals to 0, means that one of the terms must be 0. Okay, so either the first term equals to 0 or the second term is 0. So when second term is 0, I will get 3 ln x is minus 1. Therefore, ln x is negative 1 over 3. Now, to eliminate the ln, I have to take e both sides. So, e ln will be 1. So, x equals to e power negative 1 over 3. So, but then when you refer to the graph, obviously, your m is not having x equals to 0. Alright? So, this one omitted. So, I will take this x. And then now, with this x, we need to count the y values. So, just substitute into this y. x cubed ln x. So when x equals to the exponential value, your y is 
x cube ln x. So now replace e negative 1 over 3. This is our x. You cube it and then ln e negative 1 over 3. So the cube uh, 1 over 3 times 3, we have a formula here, e a power b. This is e a b. Just multiply the a and b. So 1 over 3 times 3 is 1. Therefore, I get e power negative 1. Then the e ln, okay, e ln a is going to be a. So here, I will get negative 1 over 3. So at last, you will be getting negative 1 over 3 e degree 1 because the e with negative degree. So now, my m with coordinates, okay, so you can keep this e power negative 1 over 3 and then y coordinates will be negative 1 over 3 e. So that's the solution for the question. Now B, find the exact area of the shaded region bounded by the curve, the axis and the line. So area is integrate the y. So the y now is x cubed ln x dx. Okay, so look at the question. X axis x equals to half. Right, x axis x equals to half. That means now we need to integrate from 0 to Sorry, uh, let me check what is the region. Area of the shaded region. Okay, we need the shaded region. Shaded region is here. That means I need to know what is this point. Okay, so this point happens when the y equals to 0. So now, it is half until upper limit. So when y equals to 0, x cubed ln x equals to 0 which means either x cubed equals to 0 or ln x equals to 0. So, the first one will get will give you x equals to 0. So, for ln x equals to 0 means that x is going to be e0, exponential 0 is 1. So, I know that you have to integrate up to 1. So, for this integration, we need to apply the by parts. So, your u is ln x, dv dx is x cubed. So now your du dx is 1 over x. The v is to integrate x cubed. Then you get x degree 4 over 4. Right? So now your area, our integration by parts formula is integrate u dv dx dx equals to uv minus integrate v du over dx dx here. Now, the integration with limits, so we have to consider limits A to B for all the terms on the right hand side. Now here, I will get uv, so I will write x degree 4 over 4 ln x with limits half to 1 minus integrate half to 1 v du dx. So x degree 4 over 4 multiply with 1 over x dx. Okay, and now replace the x by 1 first. I will get 1 over 4 ln 1 minus 1 over 4 times half degree 4. Replace the x by half. Then ln half. Okay, minus. Take out the 1 over 4. This x degree 4 over x can be simplified into just x cubed. So now to integrate x cubed, I will get x degree 4 over 4 limits from half to 1. Okay, so now, ln 1 is going to be 0. Alright, then when you simplify, this is going to be 1 over 64. Then, ln half. Okay, there is a negative here. So negative. Now, half is basically 2 power negative 1. Alright, then this 4 will be combined with 1 over 4. I will get negative 1 over 16. And then I will just replace the x by 1. So 1 to degree 4 is still 1. Then minus half to degree 4. Okay, so from here, we have a formula. Ln a to the power of b is b ln a. So I'm going to apply this in simplifying ln 2 power negative 1. That means this negative 1 will be combined will be brought down and combined with the negative. At last, I will get positive. 
So I will get 1 over 64 ln 2. Okay, 1 over 64, 1 over 64 ln 2. And then for the next term, here is going to be 1, negative 1 over 16, 1 minus 1 over 2 power 4 is 16. Okay, so at last, I will be getting the answer because we are requested to get the exact form. So this value is going to be negative 15 over 256. Okay, that will be the exact value of the area. Okay, now next, the variables x and y satisfy the differential equation given x equals to 0 and y equals to 0. Solve the differential equation first part and find the value of y when x equals to half. This is the second part. So now I will copy the question first. Okay, then from here, I will split the variables, means that the y will be moved to the left side, the dx will be moved to the right side. So when I move the e3y to the left hand side, it's basically 1 over e3y, which means it's e power negative 3y dy, then sine square 2x dx, and now followed by integration both sides. So for the right hand side, to integrate sine squared or cos squared, we need to convert it to double angle formula first, which means cos 2a. So from cos 2a, I will refer to this form, this formula, 1 minus 2 sine squared a. So now I get sine squared, as, sine squared a as a subject. So move it to the right side or left hand side. Sine squared a, it will be 1 minus cos 2a and this is 2. Now I need to get sine squared a. The 2 will be moved down, becomes half. Okay, then from here, I will get this is half integrate 1 minus cos. Okay, now you check the a, you compare the a now. The a is 2x, right, which means a is 2x, then here I get 2a. So 2a is going to be 4x. So now I will get cos 4x dx. So for you to integrate exponential functions, integrate e a x plus b dx, I have to rewrite the whole e. Then I differentiate a x plus b is going to be a. So over a and then plus c. So now apply this into left hand side where I integrate exponential negative 3 y, I will rewrite and divide by differentiate negative 3 y is negative 3. Then right hand side half, integrate 1 with respect to x is going to be 1x. But then now integrate cos, it will be sine. Okay, integrate cos x dx, it will be sine x plus c because differentiate sine x is cos x. So here I'll get sine, rewrite 4x, differentiate 4x is over 4, and then plus c. So now replace the x and y values x0, y0. So when x0, your y is 0. So for the left hand side, I will get e0. E0 over negative 3. So here, E0 over negative 3 equals to half 0 minus sine 0 over 4 plus C. So the sine 0 is basically 0. This is 0. Okay, E0 is 1 for the left hand side. This is 1. Which means now I'm getting negative 1 over 3 so I will get negative 1 over 3 the left hand side, I mean the right hand side first term will be 0 then equals to C so now I rewrite so now E negative 3y over negative 3 is half of x minus sine 4x over 4 minus 1 over 3. Okay, let's look at the question. Solve the differential equation means that it's not requested to get y as a subject. So I will just leave it in this form as my solution. Then I'll find the y where x is half. Okay, so I rewrite my e first. 
So when x equals to half, right? So e negative 3y over negative 3 is half of x is half. So minus sine 4 times half over 4, then minus 1 over 3. So from here, I will get, right, so for this case, I will just get e minus 3y. At the same time, this minus 3 move up. So I times the whole equation by minus 3. Then right hand side, all this, when you calculate, it will be 0 0.590987. Okay, when you times by minus 3. So now to get the y, I have to take e both sides. So, sorry, I have to take ln both sides because I want to eliminate the e. So, I will get minus 3y equals to ln 0 0.590987. Then, my y is going to be negative 1 over 3 of this ln. And then, I will calculate the value and get the final answer. So, the final answer is going to be 0 0.175. Okay, because the question doesn't mention it must give the answer in exact form. So you can just calculate or one shot. Alright. So if you don't want to use this, you can just use another option which is using leaving your answer in exact form. Which means I start from here. E negative 3y over negative 3 equals to, here I bring in first, 1 over 4 minus, this one I bring in. So 4 and half will be half plus 2. Okay, 4 and a half is 2. So I'll get sine 2 over 8, then minus 1 over 3. Then now, I will times the whole equation by minus 3. Alright, so you get e negative 3y equals to these two, you combine together. Okay, then you will get minus 1 over 12. Then minus sine 2 over 8, and then times by minus 3. Then here you will be getting um, 1 over 4 plus 3 over 8 sine 2. And then take ln both sides. So negative 3y is ln 1 over 4 plus 3 over 8 sine 2. Then at last your y just move down the negative 3. So I get negative 1 over 3 ln 1 over 4 plus 3 over 8 sine 2. So that's the solution in exact form. Okay, now question number 10. With respect to O, to the origin O, the points A, B, C, D have position vectors given by all this. Find the obtuse angle between the vectors O, A and O, B. So now, if let's say O, A and B, this is the angle. Right, we need these two vectors, OB and OA. So now, my formula, I define first. Let theta be the angle between OA, vector OA and vector OB. So I'm going to use the scalar products formula. OA dot OB is magnitude OA, magnitude OB, cos Theta. So the dot product you just times, okay, times and plus. So 3 times 1 plus minus 1 times 2 plus 2 times minus 3 equals to modulus. The modulus A, B, o, A is basically the magnitude of this. So 3 squared plus negative 1 squared plus 2 squared. Then square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 3 squared. That is my magnitude of OB then cos theta. So for the left hand side, I will get 3 minus 2 minus 6 equals to modulus of 14, a uh, square root of 14, then square root of 14, then cos theta. Okay, so now my cos theta is going to be left hand side, 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 minus 6, I get minus 5. So minus 5 over square root 14 times square root 14. So basically, this is minus 5 over 14. Then my theta is going to be inverse cos. Okay, once your theta is negative, which means that is already the obtuse angle. Alright, 
So, obtuse angle equals to 110.9 degrees. So, that's the A. Now, the line L passes through the points A and B. Find the vector equation for the line L. So, now I need to get AB vector. So, vector AB is OB minus OA. So, now my OB, I just rewrite 1, 2, 3, 1, 2 minus 3. So, here 1, 2 minus 3 minus the OA is 3 minus 1, 2. So, when you minus, you will be getting negative 2, 3, negative 5. Okay, so now the vector equation of L is going to be R equals to, you can take any points. Now I take OA, you can take OB. I mean the position vector of any points. So here is going to be plus lambda AB. So my OA is 3, negative 1, 2. Plus lambda, negative 2, 3, negative 5. Okay, so if you want, you can just factorize the negative from the AB. Then it will be 3, negative 1, 2 plus T, 2, negative 3, 5. So that is our vector equation of the line L. Now see, find the position vector of the points of intersection of the line L and the line passing through C and D. So now, line L already found. I need to find the line, the equation of the, the vector equation of the line for uh, that passing through CD. So it's the same uh, same method as just now. Firstly, we need to get the CD. It will be OD minus OC. So now my OD is 5 minus 6, 11. OC is 1, negative 2, 5. So just replace it. So when you minus, you will get 4 minus 4, 6. Okay, then from here, I can factorize a 2. Then I get 2, negative 2, 3. Because we need to get the uh, direction vector. So direction vector will be 2, negative 2, 3. So now my line, vector equation of line CD. I let it be R2. So it will be OC plus, let's say, SCD. So now, OC is 1, negative 2, 5. So the S, the CD, I will just take this. Okay? So 2, negative 2, 3. So now, to get the point of intersection, I need to rewrite my R1, which is the line equation. I let this be R1. So my R1 equals to 3, minus 1, 2, plus T, 2 minus 3, 5. So now, for the intersection points, R1 equals to R2. So, by solving this simultaneous equation and open all the brackets, then you will get the answer. So now, 3, now I open the brackets, the first one is 3 plus 2t. Then for the second row, from the R1, it will be minus 1, minus 3t. Third row will be 2 plus 5t. They're all equal sign. For the row 2, first row, for the R2, first row is going to be 1 plus 2s. Second row, minus 2 minus 2s. Third row, 5 plus 3s. Okay, I let this be three equations. Now, I need to find either s or t. Okay, then I will get the intersection point. So, now to solve this, I will use first and second equations because I have the 2s. One is positive, one is negative. So, first plus second to eliminate the 2s. So, for the left-hand side, 3 plus minus 1, it will be 2. Minus 2 plus minus 3, t, it will be minus t. Right-hand side, 1 plus minus 2 is minus 1. Then, 2s and minus 2s will be cancelled off. So from here, my t, I just move it to right side, and this minus 1 move to the left side. I will get 2 plus 1. Therefore, t is 3. So once I get t is 3, right, 
then I will substitute the T into my R1 because the T belongs to R1. So now from R1, right? Oh, I will just write R1. No need to write from. So my R1 is 3 minus 1, 2. 3 minus 1, 2 plus that. So I will rewrite 3 minus 1, 2 plus T. 2 minus 3, 5. So 2 minus 3, 5. Then replace the T by 3. Then here I will get 9, minus 10, and 17. Okay, so then the question is asking for vector position, right? So this is our vector position. Sorry, not vector position, the position vector of the intersection point. So position Vector of the intersection point is 9 minus 10 and 17. Okay, so that's the solution of this question. Now for question 11, A, express fx in partial fractions. So first of all, we, look, we have to check the highest degree of x in the numerator is 2. But then the denominator, when you expand, it will be 3. So this is, part, uh, this is proper rational function, which, which means we can find the partial fractions directly. So I will get ax plus b over 4 plus x squared. Then the next one is going to be c over 1 plus x because this is a linear factor. So now compare with the left hand side and get the same denominator, which means I have to times the linear factor to the first term because I already given, I already have the 4 plus x squared. So I need to times with 1 plus x, then divide by 1 plus x for the first term. And for the c over 1 plus x, I need to times with the quadratic factor. Okay, then now I will cancel off all the denominators because they are the same. Then I will just write down my numerators. So put a bracket for the ax plus b because it is considered as one whole term. Now to get the abc, right, firstly I will let the factor be 0, which means x1 plus x be 0. So now when 1 plus x equals to 0, that means my x is minus 1. So now I have to substitute this x equals to minus 1 into the whole equation. So I will get 5 bracket minus 1 squared plus minus 1 plus 11. So now I already let this be 0, which means the ax plus b multiplied by 0, I can just ignore it. Then I will be getting the c directly. So 4 plus minus 1 squared. So for the left hand side, you will be getting 15. Okay, the right hand side here is going to be 5c, so which means my c is 3. Next, I will let the x be 0. So left hand side, 0 plus 0 plus 11, so I will get 11. Then right hand side, a times 0 is already 0, then I will just get b. So b bracket 1 plus 0 is 1. Plus c, replace the x by 0, I will get 4c. And now replace the C to get the B. So now my B is 11 minus 4C, which means it's minus 1. Okay, so here we only have two linear factors. For the other unknown, which is the A, you have to let the X be any other numbers. I let it be 1. So when I let it be 1, the left hand side, I will get this. Okay, then now for the right hand side, you have to replace all the X by 1 now. So then means that I will get a times 1, so which is a, then plus b. So my b is minus 1. I will replace it directly. 
then 1 plus x, so means that 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, then plus c, c is 3, I will replace it by 3. Then 4 plus 1 squared, so 4 plus 1 squared is 5, because your x is 1. Okay, 4 plus 1 squared is 5. So now from here, left hand side is going to be 17. Then here I do expansion, 2a minus 2 plus 15. So my 2a is 17 plus 2 minus 15. So 19 minus, minus 15 is 4. That means my a is going to be 2. Once I found the a, just need to substitute back and rewrite. So my partial fraction is going to be 5x squared plus x plus 11 over 4 plus x squared multiplied with 1 plus x. It will be ax plus b. So my a is 2. So 2x, b is minus 1. So minus 1 over 4 plus x squared and then plus c. So my c is 3. Okay, positive 3. So here is plus 3 over 1 minus x. So these are my partial fractions. Now, next part, hence show the integration. Hence means use the previous answer. So integrate 0 to 2 fx dx is going to be integrate 0 to 2, the whole function here, the partial fractions that we have found. So I will copy this, 2x minus 1 over 4 plus x squared, then minus 3 over 1 plus x dx. And I need to show that this is the integration answer. So now, for your information, for the first one, we need to apply the ln formula. Okay, because we have a formula here. As long as the degree of the denominator is 1, then the numerator is the differentiation of denominator, which means it's f'x over fx, you will be getting ln fx plus c. Okay, so now, when I differentiate 4 plus x squared, I will get 2x. That means here I cannot direct solve. I have to split it into two terms. So that the first one, I'm going to use the ln. Okay, so now I split it into two terms. So which means this is 0 to 2, 2x over 4 plus x squared. Then another one is, or I will just split directly. So minus 1 over 4 plus x squared minus 3 over 1 plus x. So the first one is ln. Okay, what about the second one? The second one, we have a formula. So instead of 4, I will split, I will change it to 2 squared. Okay, another formula, I mean the formula to solve the second integration is basically integrate 1 over a squared plus x squared dx. I will get 1 over a inverse tangent x over a plus c, which means now your a is 2. Okay, then the last one, it will be ln as well. So now, I will get ln 4 plus x squared. If you don't want to use modulus, it's fine because I'm sure that it is positive. 4 is already positive, x squared must be positive. So put a bracket minus this second integration is going to be inverse tangent. So it will be 1 over 2 inverse tangent because your a is 2 now, x over 2. Then the third one, when you integrate 1 plus x, it will be 1. Sorry, when you differentiate 1 plus x, is 1 by using the ln formula. So the four, 3 will be taken out. That means it's minus 3 ln of 1 plus x. Then limits from 0 to 2. Now here, replace the x by 2 first. Ln 4 plus 4. Okay, because it is 2, so minus half inverse tangent, 2 over 2 is 1, minus 3 ln, 2 plus 1 is uh, 3, then minus, when the x is 0, so replace x by 0, first term is ln 4, then minus half inverse tangent, 0, okay, replace it by 0, then here, ln 1, minus 3 ln 1. So I will get ln 8 minus half. Inverse tangent 1 is pi over 4. Okay, minus 3 ln 3, then times in the negative, minus ln 4. Inverse tangent 0 is 0. Here is 0. Ln 1 is 0. Okay, so these are the terms, but then now I need to prove this. 
the pi already found. Okay, it's just that to simplify all the ln to be ln 54. So now I will get ln 8. Okay, we have a formula here. A ln B is ln B to the power of A. So it means that these three will be moved up. So I will get negative. This is 1 over 8 pi. Then negative ln 3 cubed. Then minus ln 4. Okay, now both also negative. Now, the last two ln will be negative. I can just take out the negative and put it as plus. Okay, after that, I will use the formula ln a plus ln b is ln a times b. Then followed by ln a minus ln b is going to be ln a over b. So here, I will get ln 8 minus pi over 8 minus, though this is going to be 27. Okay, two, 3 cubed is 27. Plus is times, so times 4. So 27 times 4, then here I will get ln. Now, you see here, we have ln 8 and minus. So use the second ln formula here, it becomes divide. So I will get 8 divided by 24, 27 times 4. Then minus pi over 8. Okay, so the 4 and 8 cancel, I will get 2. Okay, wait, let me check any mistake. Alright, my partial fractions. Okay, I found the mistake here already. The partial fractions here is plus, but I wrote negative. Okay, sorry about that mistake. So here is plus, here is plus, here plus, plus, last time is plus. So here is plus, okay, that means this is wrong. Here is going to be plus, this is minus. So I will solve the plus first then. Okay, then this one I cancel. So when I solve the plus first, I will get times. 3 cubed is 27. Then minus pi over 8, then minus ln 4. Okay, then here... I will write 8 times 27 and then I solve this minus ln 4 is divide. Then the 8 and 4 can be cancelled off or can be simplified into 2. So 2 times 27 is 54. That means you will get ln 54 minus pi over 8. Okay, that is the given form. I need 1 over pi, 1 over 8 pi. So I just rewrite. Instead of writing pi over 8, just write in the given form. So this is the requested exact form. Okay. Alright, so we have come to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends and stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Alright, thank you. Bye.